I am Fred Jealous. I am making this video in Pacific Grove, California, on the coast a couple of hours south of San Francisco. I've lived here for the past 47 years. The colorful brick wall backdrop is related to my friend's new book, Do Not Be Just Another Brick in the Wall. It's coming out soon. You may want to check it out on Amazon. I was a teacher at Talas American Orta Erkek Okulu from 1963 to 1965. And before I talk about why a piece of my heart will always reside in central Turkey, I want to acknowledge the men I knew as students at Talas. I have heard many reports of your successes in a variety of careers and of your contributions. They are very impressive. When I got the email from Jem and Tunjai requesting a video of memories, I was full of questions, moved on rather quickly, and postponed doing anything. Then one morning in early May, as I was making my morning coffee, Jem called from Istanbul to encourage me and inspire me to action. Having a brief chat with Jem was all I needed to make a commitment. That same evening, enjoying the memory of Jem's call, I sat in the dark and quiet before going to bed. I had the most amazing journey through memories of my two years with you in the Talas Kayseri area and beyond. In those memories, it was very clear that although I officially came to Talas to be a teacher of England, English and mathematics, it was my life as a student and explorer and friend the life that I shared with you and the Turkish staff and friends and family out of the classroom and off campus that created my lifelong attachment and fondness for people and places in Turkey. I want to share some of the highlights for me. Definitely the biggest commitment that I made was to learning and improving my Turkish. And because I could not speak Turkish with the students, as I was there to teach them English, I depended on the staff to be the people who taught me and the people um, from whom I learned. Mehmet Bey in the library was my, very often my main coach. And I practiced with Solmaz Hanım, Garabat Usta, Izet Bey, Avadis Usta, Nafi Bey, Avni Bey, um, as I went through my days. It provided good comedy for the staff because I gave myself permission to make a fool of myself, um, as if I were a long, young child learning to speak for the first time. It worked really well for me. And I was very proud of myself when at the end of the first year, I could give a speech in Turkish at the graduation. And I remember I followed Dürmüş Bey uh, when I gave my speech. That was quite memorable. Because I started off supervising the dorm for the older students, I had many guides and advisors from my early experiences in the Kayseri area. My first trip to a mosque, I think, was Emir Ursar Yildiz and Mehmet Kasim. They took me to Kayseri. Within the first month of my arrival, we stood in the back of the jami, and when I went to stand up, I lifted up the shoe rack, dropped it, and it slammed on the floor. I was full of embarrassment, although everyone else just went on praying. They also took me to a hammam in Kayseri, where I learned that... Um, Taking baths and showers in America did not get you as clean as I thought they did. The amount of dirt that came off my body was astonishing. Um, we also went to tea houses and played backgammon. And as I mentioned before, Mehmet Bey was my tutor uh, for Turkish much of the time. And he invited me to his wedding in the village. This was my first experience of dancing with men and also drinking rakha. 
Um, I cannot tell you how nervous I was when his best friend uh, came up, held my hand, and asked me to start the dance with him, having no idea what I was doing and also not being used to holding hands with men um, in front of other men, or anywhere for that matter. Um, what started off as something, a very nervous experience, um, became many very joyous experiences over time. I got very drunk because I had no idea what I was drinking, and the next morning the students could clearly see that climbing the 120 steps to campus was a very difficult task indeed. Um, they weren't fooled at all about my having a serious hangover. We did, um, I did the bookmobile and work camps on many of the weekends. And of course, it was a joy to meet the children in the villages. It was also um, a profound day for me when Kennedy was assassinated and I went to breakfast in the morning. Saturday morning, I had breakfast duty before we did the book, bookmobile. And I didn't know that Kennedy had been assassinated. And I walked into the dining hall to be told by the students with a great hush in the room. And then in the shock of the moment, we still had to take the bookmobile to the village. And when we came to the village, all the villages had gotten the word and were sharing their grief, their profound grief um, for the loss of, the Ken of, of Jack Kennedy. It was incredibly both surprising and deeply moving um, to see the, the outpouring of grief as we went from village to village. Also, and I think another important highlight in the work camps, besides doing the physical labor, hanging out with the students who went with me, playing games after we did the work, um, was occasionally coming upon a wedding or a special event. And probably the most dramatic was when we were there on a Sunday afternoon and men from the village were returning from the Hajj. All of the women slowly gathered and marched up the road to greet the bus. And when the bus came in, men on horses and several men carrying Turkish flags greeted them and they marched back in to the village and faced Mecca and, and had a prayer. It was um, loud, dramatic, beautiful, and very moving. And part of doing the workshops was getting permission from government officials, which was always an interesting adventure. I learned to always carry a book with me because you had no idea what the time factors were going to be. One of the most fun things we did, and also pretty challenging, um, was climbing up Mount Ergius to go skiing. Uh, that was a long hike, um, not all the way up the mountain, but a good distance up the mountain on the road uh, to hike down. But it did get us off campus um, for a big adventure and a much bigger hill than we had on campus. In the summer of 64, I had originally planned to travel and maybe go to Europe, but I was getting so involved in Turkey and so happy with my involvement that I agreed to do an international work camp in Panarvasha um, or at a village about eight kilometers outside of the town that was a unique village in that there were Circassians, Bulgarians, and Kurds that made up the population of the village. Fortunately for us, Metin Suraju and his family lived in Panarbasha, so we had local guides to access for food we needed, information we needed, medical help we needed. There were 24 of us, 10 came from other countries, um, the United States, Sweden, England, I think there was, may have been someone from Italy, 
Soman and Mehmet were co-leaders with me, and we did our best to put in the foundation and beginnings of the walls for a new school for the village. The biggest event of that time was the banquet that Metin's family put on for us at the park in Pernabasha. It was the most elegant and generous and tasty feast um, I think many of us had ever had. We were overwhelmed by the amount of generosity that it reflected. Um, it was uh, it was profound. And we did our best to have them out to dinner at the village, but we all laughed because there was nothing we could do that would compare with the generosity. And for me personally, it was also the beginning of a friendship with Metin and his family. Metin was part of the, of the workshop. The invitations I got for your parents um, for meals and weekend visits were definitely a highlight, whether it was um, locally in Kaiseri or in, in Ankara. Um, when I went to visit, experiencing the hospitality and warmth and generosity and speaking my um, Kaiseri Turkish was a lot of fun. Um, at that time, speaking proper Turkish in the city was a sign of education and culture, and I spoke improper Turkish from rural um, Turkey, and I got kind of... One weekend during Ramadan, Muharrem, Muharrem Kaya, invited me to his uncle's home in a village outside of Kayseri for the weekend and hosted me. I think we probably went on Friday. I know we returned sometime on Sunday. And we did the, the fasting for two days and the meals before sunrise and, and after sundown. And um, also Mehmet's uncle and I snuck off during the day to take a walk in his garden and smoke some bafra. It was a very special time because of the space involved between meals, because of the reflection, because of the whole tone of, of sacredness about the time, except for the sneaking off to smoke cigarettes. I returned very grateful for the experience. And the following day on Monday, I was given um, probably the biggest lesson in kindness and generosity of my life. I was deeply moved and comforted by the kindness and generosity that I received while I was in Turkey from students, from the staff at Talas, from family members of students, from people that I befriended in the city, from strangers. And I have carried this saddlebag with me as a reminder of that kindness and generosity. It's been visible with me ever since I returned home. It still is. And it helps me both to remember that level of kindness and generosity and also try and bring that same kind of kindness and generosity to the people that I encounter in my life. This saddlebag, to make it even more special, was made by Muharrem's cousin. And on the Monday afterwards at lunchtime, after the weekend, um, Muharrem's uncle showed up on campus at lunchtime. He had walked overland for five and a half hours to bring me this saddlebag and a dozen dove eggs. 
He sat for maybe half an hour, had tea with me out on the deck that overlooked Mount Aegeus, and then insisted on departing and turning around to walk five and a half more hours back to the village. I've never forgotten that. Um, it has acted as um, something to aspire to, to that level of kindness and generosity. Um, I'm still very moved even thinking about it. Uh, there was one invitation I didn't accept, which I wished I had. Tarok invited me to Konya over the Christmas holiday to um, celebrate the death day of Mevlana, which was treated as a cultural fest festival. But I was advised that it was too controversial and maybe I shouldn't go. And since I didn't fully appreciate Mevlana at the time, I took the cautious route. Um, I did go back several years later um, for the celebration, took my son. Um, but I, that was one invitation I, I wished I had accepted. The, the um, last two things I want to mention um, or, are the camping trips to Kuzkalesi. As you all know, Kuzkalesi is or was, I, at the time I won't speak anymore, this amazing, the beautiful spot down on the Mediterranean, not too far from Mersin. And I took two camping trips there with students and also one trip with, with uh, Avni Bay along. Um, it was a little bit of paradise. The, the empty beach, the castle, the showers, the cafe on the other side of the causeway with music and good food. Um, I had an opportunity to return there, but I chose not to because I didn't want to see what it looked like with all the development. We had the place to ourselves uh, when we camped there. Um, the swimming out to the castle was an extraordinary experience. And the last thing that I, I want to mention is the trips that I took alone um, without my advisors or my guides, my Turkish guides, you students, um, along with me. I occasionally would go to Kayseri um, by myself and just wander around and talk to people and have tea near the castle and read or write um, in my journal um, just to immerse myself um, in a solo journey through the town. Um, I also went out by myself to Kurultepe to see the Hittite dig and just be amazed um, that I could touch that kind of history and I actually came back with um, several pieces of pottery which I decided it was best if I just left in the country when I returned home. The first Christmas I spent um, alone in Ankara. I wanted to be completely away from all of the hype that goes on around Christmas and um, it was a wonderful, um, lonely and beautiful time, um, just wondering, knowing that the Christian world I'd come from was engaged in this ritual and I was immersing myself in another world at the moment. I also took bus trips to um, Karnabasher to see Mateen's family and wander around that village and just keep my contact with his uncle and um, with his sister and his nephews and his mother. Um, they, they were an important anchor for me, and he was an important friend for me who was not a student. And the last thing I did um, after the work camp was I took a boat trip from Istanbul to Iskender, and so I got to travel along the Black Sea and explored that part of the country on my own. 
And it was really important for me to go off on my own and make contacts on my own using the Turkish that I knew. The memories are powerful. Uh, they are current. Um, they never leave me. I'm feeling full just sitting here um, talking about them. When I came to Turkey, I was clear that my top priority was immersing myself in the world of Turkish people and culture. As a result of that immersion, I left Turkey having been given many gifts that opened my heart. I had rich examples of expressing and embodying respect, generosity, kindness, affection, and friendship that felt so true and good and comfortable to me that I tried to incorporate them as guidelines for my life in America. Talas was my first teaching job. My last teaching job was creating a community and school for men. Respectful, appreciative, and affectionate relationships amongst the men made it possible to create an alternative community where men could create together more of the lives and relationships they longed for. After 28 years, I retired and handed over the curriculum and ownership of the community we had created. At my retirement party, my friend Shaheen Gunzel played saz music to acknowledge all the ways in which the gifts I received from my time with you in Turkey were embodied in the school I created for men. Thank you for requesting a video, and I hope it is clear why part of me will always treasure the gifts I receive from my time with you. I have tried to pass them on. Best wishes to all of you with respect and love.